It's safe to say that Fortnite single-handedly has the best live events in the gaming space, and I'm not even throwing shade at Roblox. But I mean, look at the difference between the Lil Nas X concert and Ariana Grande's. I mean, Epic Games is just on another level. And so with the Skyfire live event right around the corner, let's show you everything that's been leading up to it starting all the way back in 2018. So while Fortnite Battle Royale came out in 2017, we actually didn't get our first live event until a whole six months later. And while it wasn't even technically a full live event, it kickstarted everything that has ever happened in Fortnite. This was Chapter 1 Season 3, and most players had gotten used to the game and the map and were just enjoying themselves until one day they looked into the sky and actually saw something getting closer and closer. And so eventually we realized that this was a meteor heading straight for the island. And so as the season progressed, it got even closer and the community went crazy. But it's when Season 4 came around did the meteor actually strike, and unfortunately it only happened in a cutscene. But from this meteor crash emerged a new character, the Visitor. Throughout Season 4, we watched him head to the Villain's Lair and actually hack the rocket that was being built there. And as the season came to an end, the villain then launched the rocket intending to blow up Tilted Towers. But then just before it could strike, the visitor rifted the missile all over the map and created a massive rift in the sky. The boom, we're now in season five. The crack in the sky was striking lightning out of it every single hour and with every single strike, the rift got smaller and smaller. But because it was happening so often, people got really used to the lightning strikes until one day, the unforgettable happened. Bro, why is that lasting so long? Bro, is this, is this an event? What just happened? This is the tournament! Out of nowhere, we were introduced to our friend Kevin the Cube, and the rift in the sky was closed forever. And so as season five went on, the cube roamed the map, leaving runes in different POIs until he eventually reached his destination, Loot Lake. And as we all remember, he then went underwater, turning the lake purple and bouncy. And obviously this wasn't the end of the Kevin Live event because the best was yet to come in season six. The theme of this season was Darkness Rises, and Kevin had actually risen up and become a floating island for most of season six. But near the end, he returned back to Loot Lake and began leaking energy into to a whirlpool. Eventually, he ran out of juice and that's when the butterfly event kicked off. Once his job was done, all Kevin had left to do was spin around super quickly and then explode. This took everyone to a mysterious butterfly dimension that absolutely blew the community's mind. When we came back, all trace of Kevin was gone and we were left speechless while we waited for what came next and then it was all delivered to us in 2019. This was an absolutely huge year, not just for Fortnite, but for live events in general. While 2018 gave us Kevin and the rocket launch, it had nothing on what people were about to experience. And so we started 2019 in Season 7, and this gave us a character named the Ice King. He was inside a weird ice sphere for a few days at the top of Polar Peak, preparing his ice power. And meanwhile, a storm countdown appeared on every single TV on the island. At this point, the community was pretty hyped and expecting something incredible from the Ice King. And so once his countdown ended, the king broke free from the ice sphere, turned huge, and then unleashed the snowstorm on the island, bringing snow and ice zombies to every single POI on the map. But a lot of players were disappointed in this event. It was riddled with a ton of server issues, so not many people were able to watch it live, and it is also considered one of the most underwhelming live events to date by the community. Now luckily, they didn't have to wait long to have their minds blown, because just a month later, near the end of Season 7, Fortnite announced the Showtime event. Over at Pleasant Park, a stage was built over time, and people were excited to find out that a concert was about to take place. And on the day of the event, Marshmello took to the stage and broke the internet with one of the first live concerts in video game history. This made waves everywhere, I mean it was in articles, magazines, mainstream news, it was was huge. And so as at this point, Epic Games knew that they needed to go bigger. After riding the hype of the Marshmello concert, they went straight into Season 8, giving us a mysterious vault over at Loot Lake and a new volcano on the map. Midway through the season, mysterious runes appeared around the island, and the entire Fortnite player base had to work together to move it closer to the vault. In fact, so many people began hitting the rune that Epic actually had to freeze it in place for a couple hours and increase the health by millions so that it wouldn't get to the vault too early. And well, eventually, when all the runes lined up, the Loot Lake bunker opened up and we were given a decision. We could choose choose which classic weapon to evolve, and of course the community went straight for the drum gun. Once it was unvaulted though, we all thought that was it, but this was Epic Games, they needed to go big or go home, so they erupted a volcano and sent rocks flying at retail row and tilted towers, destroying both of them. And yet while this event was awesome, some of the greatest live events in Fortnite history were just around the corner starting with Season 9. Midway through the season, a weird eye appeared inside the iceberg, and it just kind of stared at you a little creepy. But eventually, the monster this eye belonged to broke free from the iceberg and spent the rest of the 
seasons swimming around in the ocean, until eventually he rose from the surface and the island citizens launched their defense, which was a huge robot controlled by Singularity. They had an insane battle to the death with the monster ripping the zero point out of the vault and the robot taking out a secret sword from Neo Tilted. And as we all know, the robot won and then flew into space, never to be seen again. However, this event had a huge consequence. The zero point was now exposed and unstable, and that brought us to season X. It was in this season that the seven worked together to stop the zero point from exploding. They all launched all seven of their rockets at the same time and rifted the meteor from season three right into the zero point. This caused a ginormous explosion, which set up probably the most famous live event Fortnite has ever done. We were taken to the black hole. This lasted for two whole days and Fortnite deleted all of their tweets and social media posts and went completely dark. It was kind of scary. Not a single person had any idea what would happen and some kids were even scared that Fortnite had been deleted for good. But there was more to it than that. And Fortnite was going to be changed forever in 2020. And this was a pretty crazy year for Fortnite as well. It started kind of slow with Chapter 2 Season 1, but it was in this season we got our first live event of Chapter 2. It was named Star Wars Live at Risky Reels, and we watched as an awesome space battle happened in the sky. Unfortunately though, it didn't last long as the rest of the event was a talk show with J.J. Abrams and then a 30 second clip from the movie. A lot of the community really found this part pretty boring, but luckily our patience was rewarded with lightsabers and blasters. A pretty good prize, I think. But despite that, Season 1 lasted quite a while and we didn't get another live event until season two came around. But luckily our wait was worth it because season two gave us the sequel to Marshmallow's internet breaking concert. This time around Travis Scott took to the stage and he absolutely crushed it. And instead of just staying on the stage he transformed the entire island and even took us to space for a little while. Carry on top two he even performed an unreleased song and to this day a huge chunk of people still consider astronomical their favorite live event of all time, me included. And for people who want an event and not a concert season two delivered that as well as it came to an end, the center POI on the map, the Agency, opened up and actually showed off a mysterious device created by Midas. In this event, the device fights the storm and tries to push it back and get rid of it completely. But throughout all of this, we're taking to a first person view of the imagined order. It's the first time we're ever introduced to both John Jones and the mysterious IO. But it turns out we don't have enough time to answer questions because we quickly got sent straight back to the island where the storm had been replaced with a huge wall of water. And so for the rest of the season, this new storm is one of the coolest map changes of chapter two at that point, but no one would have expected what would come next. With season two spoiling us with the device and astronomical events, we all assumed season three wouldn't live up to what just happened. But Epic Games were one step ahead of us because this time around we got absolutely no event. Yeah, this was the first season in years to not have one and it kind of shocked us all. But Epic made up for it when they brought us to season four. Throughout the entirety of the Marvel season, we actually had a live event build up from the very beginning. Galactus could be spotted in the sky from miles away and with each day he got closer and closer until eventually he was just over the horizon. Let me tell you, it was a big boy. When the Devourer of Worlds event started, this is when things got kicked up a gear. He went straight for the helicarrier where we were all standing and backhanded it straight out of the sky. But luckily, Tony Stark saves us just in time and we're brought closer to Galactus, where we have to drive battle buses loaded with bombs into him. This is one of the first times we've gotten an interactive minigame in an event, and it paved the way for some of the most interactive events yet in 2021. This is it, the year we're in, and it started off with season five. And now just like in season three, this one actually didn't have a live event, but it spent the entire season building up to one. We had the zero point slowly turning more and more purple every few minutes, and it got extremely unstable to the point where we expected the live event to be happening very soon. And as it turned out, season five's live event actually happened at the very start of season six. The reason for this was because season six's cinematic trailer is actually the first few minutes of the live event. And then we have to finish that part ourselves in the zero crisis finale. It's the first time that we've had a live event that happens for every single player when they load up the game, and it definitely changed the way that seasons can start and end, especially because it was a whole event of us being guided around and interacting with the whole map. It was awesome. It also showed off the new Battle Pass skins and introduced us to all the map changes before we'd even jumped into our first match. I mean, it was a pretty awesome way of doing things, don't you think? But with Season 6 opening event taking the whole map into a primal biome, it didn't leave a lot of room for another event that season. And that takes us into the current timeline, Season 7. We've had a mothership arrive on the island, taking over half the map and even more. And during this whole takeover, Season 7 actually gave us the third concert of Chapter 2, arguably one of the biggest. This one was named the Rift Tour, and it was headlined by Ariana Grande. It started off with some mini games where we surfed around in a world made of our own rap, and we got a glimpse of every live event that happened before it. We also had an amazing shootout where we had to gun down the Storm King with our friends in a plane, and when all this was done, Ariana took to the stage and performed songs in a ton 
ton of locations. We were in the clouds, we were following her in bubbles, there was some weird cuddle team leader place, it was crazy. And a lot of fans are torn whether or not Ariana Grande or Travis Scott took the crown for best concert, but they were both equally awesome in their own ways. But I would love to know whether you guys like Travis Scott or Ariana Grande in the comments. And luckily though, season seven isn't over yet, and we actually have one more event to go. Although this one hasn't happened yet. Throughout the season, POYs have been getting abducted by the mothership, and with the most recent one being Corny Complex, the IOF shoved bombs all over it in order to blow up the ship from the inside. It is named Operation Skyfire. It will take us straight into season eight. All of this will be going down this Sunday. We'll be live streaming the events, so make sure to tune in so you don't miss a thing. You've seen the evolution of live events and how they just get bigger and more interactive, so expect Operation Skyfire to entirely blow us away, literally. Rumor has it though, we'll actually see Kevin the Q make a return once more, so uh, who knows? But thank you guys so much for watching. It has been Tommy, and keep it here on Top 5 Gaming.